Today we are going to explain hydroxychloroquine in the canal, dosage, interactions, warnings, mechanism of action, side effects, lactation, pregnancy. What is hydroxychloroquine? Hydroxychloroquine is a medicine used in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis, systemic and discoid lupus erythematosus, treatment of acute attacks of uncomplicated malaria and prophylaxis of malaria caused by Plasmodium vivax, P. falciparum, P. avali and P. malariae. Hydroxychloroquine dosage. Rheumatoid arthritis. The action of hydroxychloroquine is cumulative and needs several weeks to have a therapeutic effect on rheumatic conditions, while minor side effects may occur relatively soon. Adults, the initial dose is 400 mg per day. Treatment should be continued for 6 to 8 weeks before the effect is evaluated. During this period, hydroxychloroquine can be combined with prostaglandin synthase inhibitors, for example, acetylsalicylic acid or endomethacin. Combination therapy with gold or phenylbutazone is not recommended. Treatment should be discontinued if there is no improvement after 6 months. In an adequate response, the daily dose can be reduced after 3 months, to a maintenance dose of 200 mg per day and later possibly to 200 mg every other day. Systemic and discoid lupus erythematosus. Adults. Initial dose of 400 mg to 600 mg per day, a few weeks if necessary. Maintenance dose, 200 to 400 mg per day. Children, 6.5 mg per kilogram of ideal body weight or 400 mg per day, whichever is less. The 200 mg tablet is not suitable for children under 6 years old, or under 35 kg. Malaria. Prophylaxis. Adults, 400 mg per week. The dose should be taken on the same day of the week. Children, the weekly prophylactic dose is 6.5 mg per kilogram body weight, not to exceed the maximum dose for adults regardless of body weight. The 200 mg tablet is not suitable for children under 6 years of age, or under 35 kg. Prophylaxis should be started and continued one week before arrival and continue for at least four to eight weeks after departure from the malaria area. Treatment of uncomplicated acute malaria attack. Adults, initially 800 mg followed by 400 mg after six to eight hours and then 400 mg per day for the next two days, total 2 grams of hydroxychloroquine sulfate. For treatment of an attack of Plasmodium falciparum infection and an acute attack of Plasmodium vivax infection, a dose of 800 mg is sufficient. When prescribing treatment, official guidelines and local information should be provided. The development of resistance to anti-malarial agents should be observed. Treatment of a Plasmodium malariae. Vivax and oval infection should be concluded with treatment with adominoquinoline to control the extracytotic phase of the plasma cycle. Children, 10 mg slash kg in children is similar to 800 mg in adults and 5 mg slash kg in children is comparable to 400 mg in adults. The 200 mg tablet is not suitable for children under 6 years of age, less than 35 kg. A total dose of up to 2 grams should be administered for 3 days as follows. First dose, 10 mg per kilogram, maximum single dose of 800 mg. Second dose, 5 mg per kilogram, maximum 400 mg, 6 hours after the first dose. Third dose, 5 mg per kilogram, maximum 400 mg, 18 hours after the second dose. Fourth dose, 5 mg per kilogram, maximum 400 mg, 24 hours after the third dose. Hydroxychloroquine reduced kidney and liver function. Caution is advised in patients with kidney or liver failure. Dose reduction may be required, see section 4.4. Hydroxychloroquine form of administration. Hydroxychloroquine should be taken after meals. Prolonged use as a malaria prophylaxis and children should be avoided. Hydroxychloroquine contraindications. Hypersensitivity to the active ingredient, 4 aminoquinoline compounds. Myasthenia gravis. 
pre-existing maculopathy of the eye. Retinitis pigmentosa. The 200 mg tablets are not suitable for a body weight of less than 35 kg. Hydroxychloroquine special warnings and precautions for use. General. Retinopathy. Before starting treatment, the patient should be examined by careful ophthalmoscopy and fundoscopy to determine visual acuity, field of vision, color vision, and retinal changes, e. g. scotomy, nicotolopy, or other retinal changes. Tests should be repeated every three months. If visual changes occur, hydroxychloroquine treatment should be discontinued and eye tests repeated every three to six months. Retinal toxicity is predominantly dose-related. The risk of retinal damage is small at daily doses of up to 6.5 mg kg body weight. Exceeding the recommended daily dose significantly increases the risk of retinal toxicity. The frequency of follow-up should be increased and adapted to the individual in the following cases. Doses higher than 6.5 mg kg body weight. Absolute body weight used as a guide for dosage may result in overdose in obese patients. Kidney failure. Cumulative dose greater than 200 grams. Elderly people. Decreased visual acuity. If only distortion of the visual field occurs, visual acuity, color vision, etc., immediately discontinue treatment with hydroxychloroquine. The patient should be carefully monitored. Changes in the retina and visual disturbances may even progress after completion of treatment. In the case of prolonged therapy, the daily dose should be kept as low as possible, with a total maintenance dose of 400 mg day year as the upper limit, which corresponds to 6 mg kg. Hypoglycemia Hydroxychloroquine has been shown to cause severe hypoglycemia including life-threatening unconsciousness in patients treated with and without anti-diabetic medications. Patients treated with hydroxychloroquine should be warned about the risk of hypoglycemia and the associated clinical signs and symptoms. Patients who have clinical symptoms suggestive of hypoglycemia during hydroxychloroquine treatment should have their blood glucose monitored and treatment reviewed as necessary. Chronic cardiac toxicity. Cases of cardiomyopathy with heart failure have been reported, in some cases with fatal outcome in patients treated with hydroxychloroquine. Clinical monitoring of the signs and symptoms of cardiomyopathy is recommended, and hydroxychloroquine should be discontinued if cardiomyopathy develops. Chronic toxicity should be considered when disorders of conduction, branch block, atrioventricular heart block, and biventricular hypertrophy are diagnosed. Other follow-up during long-term treatments. Patients receiving long-term treatment should have regular blood tests, complete blood count. If abnormalities occur, hydroxychloroquine treatment should be discontinued. All patients on long-term therapy should be tested periodically for musculoskeletal function and tendon reflexes. If weakness occurs, stop taking the medication. Extra pyramidal symptoms may occur in patients treated with hydroxychloroquine. Although the risk of bone marrow depression is low, it is recommended that the blood count be monitored regularly. Caution is advised in patients with liver or kidney failure. Dose reduction may be necessary. Caution is advised in patients with gastrointestinal, neurological or blood disorders. Caution is also advised in patients with quinine sensitivity. Patients with glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, porphyria, which may be exacerbated by hydroxychloroquine, or psoriasis may be at increased risk of skin reactions. Young children are especially sensitive to the toxic effects of 4-aminoquinolones. Hydroxychloroquine should be kept out of sight and reach of children. Malaria Hydroxychloroquine is not effective against the chloroquine-resistant strains of P. falciparum and P. vivax, and is not active against the exoerythrocytic forms of P. vivax, P. avali and P. malariae. Prolongation of the QT interval Hydroxychloroquine has the potential to prolong the QTC interval in some patients. Hydroxychloroquine should be used with caution in patients with congenital or documented QT interval prolongation and or known risk factors for QT interval prolongation, such as heart disease, for example, heart failure, 
myocardial infarction. Proarrhythmic conditions, for example bradycardia, less than 50 lpm. History of ventricular dysrhythmias. Hypokalemia and or uncorrected hypomagnesemia. And during concomitant administration with QT prolongation agents, as this may increase the risk of ventricular arrhythmias, sometimes with fatal outcome, the magnitude of QT interval prolongation may increase with increasing drug concentrations. Therefore, the recommended dose should not be exceeded. If signs of cardiac arrhythmia appear during treatment with hydroxychloroquine, treatment should be discontinued and an ECG should be performed. Hydroxychloroquine drug interaction and other forms of interaction. There are indications that four aminoquinolins, such as hydroxychloroquine, are pharmacologically incompatible with monoamino oxidase inhibitors. Hydroxychloroquine sulfate has been reported to increase plasma levels of digoxin. Serum levels of digoxin should be monitored closely in patients receiving concomitant treatment. As hydroxychloroquine may increase the effects of hypoglycemic therapy, a decrease in doses of insulin or anti-diabetic drugs may be required. Hydroxychloroquine inhibits CYP2D6. The concomitant use of drugs that inhibit CYP2D6 is discouraged. Chloroquine may reduce the antibody response to the rabies vaccine. Intracutaneous administration of the rabies vaccine has been discontinued. The response after intramuscular administration is generally considered sufficient. The activity of anti-epileptic drugs may be affected if given in conjunction with hydroxychloroquine. Hydroxychloroquine may lower the seizure threshold. Co-administration of hydroxychloroquine with other antimalarials known to lower seizure threshold, for example, mefloquine, may increase the risk of seizures. Medications known to prolong QT interval slash potential to induce cardiac arrhythmia. Hydroxychloroquine should be used with caution in patients taking drugs that prolong the QT interval, for example class yaw and three antiarrhythmics, tricyclic antidepressants, antipsychotics, some anti-infectives due to the increased risk of ventricular arrhythmia. Halophantrine should not be administered with hydroxychloroquine. Hydroxychloroquine fertility pregnancy and lactation. Pregnancy. A moderate amount of data on pregnant women, between 300-1000 prospective pregnancies, indicates that there is no malformative or fetal-slash-neonatal toxicity of hydroxychloroquine. 